I'm Jacob. And I'm Jaden. And this is The, the State, State of Things. Things. All right. Well, welcome back, everyone, to the State of Things after a great winter break. I know I had some wonderful adventures over this break. Jacob, how was yours? Uh, you know, I had fewer adventures. My break was mostly centered on uh, the LSAT and uh, working uh, full time as a real estate agent for my parents. Uh, so, you know, riveting stuff, really just the way that I think most students on this campus would want to kick back and spend winter break. Um, you know, so doing open houses, studying logic games, uh, you know, those are the things that I know really get students going on this campus. And so I was happy to have a typical, you know, Iowa State winter break. It was more of a mental adventure for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so on brand, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting over here dying laughing because, yeah, I had a great winter break. Studied for the LSAT and sold some houses. Yeah. Like, that's not an answer yeah. you'd hear from every student. Yeah, I, I also took the LSAT, but we don't, we don't, we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> the studying is what matters. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? So, actually, the adventures that I went on, I was part of a 314 course that actually, over winter break, went to Sydney, Australia. And so I spent two weeks there exploring the city. Um, you know, we had some assignments. We went up into the Blue Mountains, got to see the Hava a lot, and uh, watched the, the New Year's <laughs> Eve fireworks from the Sydney Opera House. It was a great time. I think we did superlatives down there, you know, okay. amongst all of ourselves. And my superlative was most likely to gaslight himself into thinking he has a good <laughs> accent because I tried practicing so much. And I may have gaslighted myself, but... There are reasons I'm speaking normally right yeah, now. No, I, I appreciate what is a, a titanic amount of effort that you're putting in right now to resist. Like, you slipped into it a couple times, but just falling completely into the accent. Um, I think myself, our production team, and obviously all the listeners at home are very appreciative of your restraint. Um, if but you yeah. want to hear a real accent, go to Australia yourself. Yeah. That's, that's my advice. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we're back here. We're on campus. Uh, student government's getting going for the semester. Uh, you know, we had to, we actually didn't have our first meeting um, the first week we got back because there was some weather that evening. Uh, but we finally had our first meeting, uh, again, up and going for this uh, semester. Uh, the uh, legislative session uh, down in Des Moines has started for the state legislature. Uh, so we've already been down there a couple times just to talk with legislators about, you know, the priorities that we have for the year. And then uh, we're getting ready for Big 12 on the Hill. So a couple of us from student government will be flying out to DC in late February, early March to uh, go advocate to our congressional delegation and congressional leaders, uh, along with the uh, leadership teams from the other Big 12 institutions. So really present this nice unified front going in uh, to DC and hopefully we can push uh, some progress on a couple different bills. I think briefly, Explain what some of those things at the state and the national level are that we'll be talking about, just because it's the state government. Like, what role yeah. does students, or how do they affect students at all? You know, I don't feel like everyone knows that kind of connection about how they can impact us. Mm -hmm. So the, the state government definitely has probably the most impact on uh, the Iowa State campus out of the out of the two uh, inst out of the two governments, and so uh, you know, down there we're talking about funding for Iowa State, particularly. Uh, funding for mental health resources on campus. Um, we're also talking about, uh, you know, licensing issues when it comes to mental health resources. Uh, and so, like, you know, making sure that we could do uh, cross-state line licensing so it's easier for uh, mental health professionals to practice in the state of Iowa, especially if they're, you know, in another state they could maybe do telehealth stuff in or move to the state of Iowa and not have to worry about going through a relicensing process. And so... That's a big thing. And then, you know, we're also just talking about other things. Uh, the University of Iowa, we're partnering with them on their, uh, you know, rental uh, checklist uh, bill that they've been pushing for the last couple of years. They've uh, been real leaders on that. And so hopefully we can maybe help them get that across the finish line. Um, and then, you know, at the federal level, it's a lot broader, you know, and so big things like the Pell Grant are, is a large part of the conversation. Um, and so, you know, that's a large f uh, piece of financial aid that the federal government offers to uh, students uh, who are, uh, you know, coming from lower income backgrounds. And so uh, that is something where we're pushing for additional funding. There's been this big initiative for the last couple of years called Double the Pell, uh, just because the, the Pell has fallen way behind on inflation. And so there's some bipartisan interest on Capitol Hill about this. And so we're hoping that maybe that's something that, you know, is uh, seen pretty broadly as reasonable. 
Um, and so we could maybe get that to happen, and that would be a massive boon for uh, uh, college students both here and around the country. Um, and that's why it's kind of a conference-wide um, push is because we're all experiencing the same problem when it comes to college affordability. And so hopefully that's, you know, something else, an area where we can cooperate together. And then also there were some additional uh, mental health bills. Uh, with the new Congress just starting, we don't actually know the bill numbers or what specific initiatives are going to get reintroduced, but there were some initiatives from previous years that will probably get reintroduced, and so we'll probably support those again, and hopefully this year maybe we can get them across the finish line. So really those big key takeaways of affordability for students, mental health resources, and mm. support for renters on campus I think is something we're always working for. Um, and I know it's something else that we work on a lot of student government is food insecurity. Mm -hmm. um, and a big project that we've actually been trying to push through is helping to fund an organization on campus called the Good Earth Student Farm. And they are a student-led organization, um, student-led farm out at the ISU Horticulture Research Station. And they've got a whole high tunnel to themselves and a portion mm -hmm. of an acre where they grow their own produce and are able to take it home. I mean, it's free of charge. Any student can join. I know they're really looking for more students to join an expansion, so promoting them right there. Um, but then kind of like the big kicker is all of the produce that they personally can't, you know, take home, they donate it to shop. And I know just this last summer, they donated over 700 pounds of fresh produce. And people knew, like, the day of the week they were coming. I was actually talking with their president, Sarah Mattenly, and she would just bring in the crates, and people would be lined up outside a shop, and she, the baskets wouldn't even make it in. She was just handing them out to people in line, mm -hmm. and, I mean, they would fly like hotcakes. And so... I mean, that's an amazing thing for us to support of helping students get food, but good, nutritious, and locally grown, literally eight miles north of town, grown food. And so that's been another initiative we've been trying to push through Senate. Yeah, and I think that'll be awesome. You know, once we can get all the details worked out, hopefully that uh, that bill will make it through Senate and we can, you know, provide support for, uh, you know, uh, food insecurity. And, you know, it's also kind of a sustainability thing. And so i uh, really excited to see that get through. Um, but... You know, today, we, our guest on the podcast is the Associate Vice President for Public Safety and Chief of Police, Michael Noon. Uh, so uh, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll come back for that interview. So buckle in for that. Welcome back, everybody, to another producer segment here on The State of Things. It is a new year here, the year 2023, which means that it is a new episode here on State of Things and a new producer bit just for you. As always, you are joined here by your fabulous producers, Ethan, Maddie, and myself. Guys, how are we doing today? We're doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, you know, started the year off strong, this new semester off strong. I'm doing really well. But yeah, how about you, Maddie? Yeah, right there with you. It's been a busy semester already, but I'm trucking through. You know what I mean? Yeah. Senior year, almost done. So yeah. yeah. As you guys know, the new year always means New Year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. So. A bit of a double-sided question for you guys. First off, do you have any personal New Year's resolutions that you guys have decided to take on for 2023? And we as a producer kind of group met a little before 2022 ended to kind of talk about new ideas that we had for State of Things this year. So what are we doing New Year's resolution-wise for State of Things as producers? Well, I'll answer the, the first one. I... This... This may come to a shock, but I wanted to start going to the gym, and can you believe how fast I turned out that <laughs> resolution? I know, it's crazy, right? Well, like 90% of America. Yeah, like, I, I first couple days were solid, and then, you know, it just kind of... New Year's resolution, I don't, I don't, I really try to not do New Year's resolutions, because, mm -hmm. like, I'll think of them, like, a couple of weeks before, but I'm like, why wait? Like, I should start now. Right. But then I wait anyways, and it just doesn't, like... Yeah, so. it doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere, but it's fine. You know, it's still something that I'm trying to I'm trying to maintain. Hopefully, uh, I've got a little bit lighter of a workload this semester, so hopefully, I can make it. I can make it more than I did last semester. But that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Maddie, what about you? Yeah, I I'm kind of in the same boat where I don't really do like the the specific New Year's resolutions any like every more anymore. Pardon me, because um, I like I do the same thing where I get over it like two weeks in and I'm like you know what this is too specific for me to be doing this every day so I've kind of just decided to do like take making sure I'm taking care of myself in one way every day so like mm -hmm. could be the gym but I got in a car crash so I can't really go to the gym right now <laughs> um but like 
maybe eat a healthy meal for one day or make sure I'm drinking my water, like stuff like that, you know, yeah. just to make sure that I'm able to keep up with my schedule because it's a full one. Yeah, How about you? For sure. um, so my New Year's resolution is one that kind of carried over for the last couple of years. Um, so one thing I realized is that I like to overwork myself. I get myself involved in way too many things. And so I end up being stressed, overworked, and just mm -hmm. very unproductive in certain things. Like I'm not doing justice to everything I'm signed up for. So one of the uh, resolutions I had going into fall semester 2022 that is carried over into spring 2023 is regimenting my schedule, mm -hmm. kind of mapping all of it out, making sure I'm going to all my classes, and my work schedule is in line with student government and everything else that I'm involved in, that everything is mapped out. There's a certain block of time that is set out for everything, including studying and homeworks and everything else. But there's that time that's set aside for all of those activities. So yeah. it's been fairly successful thus far. Um, I've had to uh, move around my uh, work schedule a couple of times is to kind of, you know, make sure I'm still hitting my 20 hours, but still like, you know, sure. Keeping the other yeah. things kind of up and active, but you know, it's been, it's been going good. I've been, I've been following it, not exactly to a T, but pretty darn close. Yeah. I had to start doing that last semester because mm -hmm. I was like, I could not keep track of anything I was doing. It's like a day by day schedule you have to go yeah. by at that point. I mean, better yeah. we learn it now than never, I suppose. I suppose. College all about like teaching you life skills, right? And that's yeah. gotta be schedule management and everything too. So for sure. So we also mentioned producer uh, resolutions. Do you want to elaborate? That's true. Elaborate? Yeah. So we had a meeting a little bit before 2022 ended. Mm -hmm. We met with our hosts and with other people involved with State of Things. And we had an idea to make State of Things kind of bigger and better. So for those of you who are watching on YouTube, I'm sure you guys have already seen the lighting that we have for this new segment. Uh, can I just say... Um, Extremely good. Well, can I just give props to you, Ethan? <laughs> props for to Ethan. Fantastic job on the lights the other day. Like, it was something that we were toying with last semester, but to actually see it, like, come to fruition in a way that, like, we were all proud of, like, just... Yeah, I'm I'm super happy with how it turned out, to be honest. Like, I was... I played around with it last semester. I, I mean, if... Wendy's episode, we yeah. I added some color in the back just to see, and it turned out, I'm like, yeah, this looks good. And then I played around with doing, like, a full, like... And it's it turned out so well. It, it did. It, it, did. Really it looked did. like just even the vibe, like the vibe on camera was cool, but also just the vibe in the room and the vibe mm -hmm. back in mm -hmm. the control room was just. Oh, it was fantastic. Yeah, we Chef's were watching kiss. you. We were watching you set it up, and we we're like, "What is this guy doing?" I have got it. My like for for some reason on things like that, my mind just like has like a. I it's hard to explain it to people. I don't. I really don't understand. I can't be like. All right, I need this here. Like I'm like, right, right. I just kind of get it in that vicinity, and I'll go and make sure that it's exact. Like, because I needed to be, I wanted to be like, I need it here. Right, here, it's here, such here. a specific thing. I had to pull, I had to pull lights down from the TV yeah. studio next yeah. door. Yep. And it, I mean, again, but it, it worked. Yeah. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, you don't get to see all the technology that was put around, but there was a ton of stuff that we had to set up. Like there was a lot of lights, a lot of like mm -hmm. blood. If you blood if you follow us on Instagram. Um, actually, we post like behind the scenes um, when we record episodes and stuff mm. like that. And so we posted on Thursday. I posted a little story of us back there. Um, and yeah, you so can see the plug. lights there. Quick I plug. ISU StuGov. Yeah. Follow Mo it. Most of our socials, ISU StuGov, I think. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but then aside from just the lighting of episodes themselves, I know that Maddie and I have been kind of taking on a bit of more of a higher production in terms of taking on things like editing a blooper reel for mm -hmm. the end of the year because... Let's be honest, we like to have fun in here. And there's a lot of stuff that's said, uh, both uh, during our segments and in between our segments that honestly need to make a blooper reel at some point uh, in time. But there's other ideas that we have going on. Like we, uh, three of us are working on video montages uh, to kind of put at the beginning. So you'll be seeing a different sort of intro that uh, will hopefully be appealing for uh, those of you that are watching and or listening. Uh, new music. Um, there's a lot of new things mm -hmm. that we've we've decided to take on. New graphics, nice, hopefully. Nice 2023 new graphics. Yeah. revamp, yeah. New branding, like the whole whole shebang. So yeah, and I think it's important, to, you know, to realize that like with a new year comes change, but not only just a new year, but just like this is a new rebranding of us. Like we yeah. want to, mm -hmm. like we're hoping, <clears throat> like I'm I'm hoping that this is something that you know the next campaign slate will take on into the future. Mm -hmm. And so setting them up for as much success as possible is something that we were truly focused on going into this. Like not just setting us up for the good here and now, but making sure that State of Things becomes a lasting thing, a lasting thing that you all get to enjoy. So, yeah. 
Absolutely. So yeah, it's it's, it's been fun. It's been fun. It's been fun. I've been, I've <coughs> really enjoyed it to be honest with you. I've yeah. enjoyed the work on here, and we also have to we have to keep we have to keep in our roots. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. We have to remember where we started. Right. But always humble beginnings. Humble beginnings. Humble beginnings. Well, new year, um, new music. Oh sure. I enough. like that's just, that's. My favorite thing to do is I love going into the new year trying to refresh my music taste. Oh, yeah. Um, it, 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 it usually, like, if you look at my Spotify, my Spotify raps and stuff like that, it, my art, my top artist is, like, pretty much the same. It's been the same for the last three years. But, like, the actual playlist and the top 100 songs, I think, is what they give you. Completely different from year to year. Like, <laughs> it is completely different from year to year. So I just think it would be cool to go talk about... Um, what are your favorite songs right now? Just like one or two or three if you really yeah, want to. Yeah. If you want to talk about an artist, this is, I just, I feel like it would be cool to kind of see your music taste now and maybe you reflect at the end of the year what your music taste is like at the end of the year. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, I think I happened to just check my Spotify earlier today and I had the song Tyrants by Catfish and the Bottleman on repeat. Ooh. It's it's a really good song, and it has like a tone change in the middle that I'm kind of obsessed with. I don't know why, but sometimes like music just makes me feel things. You know what I mean? So it's a really, I really like that song. And honestly, that whole album has been on repeat for me. I think it's called um, "The Balcony." So I highly recommend "The Balcony" by Catfish and the Bottleman. Great music. Nice, nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, my tastes have changed subtly from the uh, from last year to now. I've started listening to more of uh, rock, oh, a lot yes. more. Um, but for my my song rec uh, for a rock genre, I have to go with one of my all time favorites, Skillet. Mm-hmm. Skillet came out with a new single called Finish Line, which is going on uh, their a new album that they're coming out with called Dominion, and I am super pumped, super excited for it. So um, Finish Line was super good. Uh, it was it's a little different from the uh, the vibe that they typically go for. It's still rock, but um, John Cooper's four sounded a little bit different than what I'm accustomed to. But again, with the idea of change and that thing, you know, it's it was really cool to kind of hear like Skillet's kind of taking these things in a slightly different direction than I would have originally have anticipated. Um, and then an, another genre I've gotten a lot into, which is going to come as a surprise, being that we are in Iowa, but country music. I did not grow up <laughs> listening to like, hey, okay. I did not grow no, up no, listening no. to any country music at all. Okay, like I, I have never been a fan of it, but I have come to find like I don't listen to the country radio station. Can't really do that. But like, there's uh, a certain few songs that pop up every now and again that I listen to. That I'm like, oh, this is a good song. I kind of like it. Like I've really gotten into Hardy's new album, uh, The Mockingbird and the Crow. Uh, mm-hmm. That was a a fantastic album, love that. Uh, but the song that really has me hooked right now is "She Had Me at Heads Carolina." I can't tell you why. I I heard it at a wedding reception, and everyone just out there just like bopping to that song was just, it just made my night. And I added it to my current playlist, and that's been my country song on repeat. Nice. That's I, I I'm gonna be I, I'm in the same boat with you. Like country. Uh, grew up pretty much not the biggest fan. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got a time and place. It's got a time True. and place. There are a few. So, there are a few songs that I will like crank up in my car and scream at the top of my lungs. Oh, that yeah. I just like. I will windows down type of mood. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I to be honest with you, you said Hardee's and I th- instantly thought of the food. Yeah, restaurant. I was gonna say. I've <laughs> never heard, which got me thinking to the Burger King commercial Whopper. Wha- anyway. Whopper, yeah, Whopper. Whopper. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, for me though. <sighs> So I'm going to give you, like, three. So my kind of like my top song right now, for some reason, SZA, Kill Bill. I know it's like, oh, the, I know yes. it's like the top yes. song on her album, uh-huh. her new album, but I just, I, I don't know. It's, it's so, so good. Okay, but that whole album was, was really Yeah, the whole album so was like, fantastic. I respect, I respect your, your, your opinion. Um, I just finally, it was towards the end of last semester, I listened to the Harry Styles, um, Harry's House album fully through oh. and um matilda or Sat- matilda or satellite mm. so like Both top two songs on the album i love those mm-hmm. and then um i'm gonna butcher this name claire rosencrantz she's like a tiktok creator but i oh. love her songs for some reason and it's <laughs> like i don't understand it like i'm like it, i don't know they're just they're good i like them they're catchy and they stick in my head all day and i'll just hum her hum her songs and then i'll get in my car and i'll play them and it's yeah 
I love music. Music, like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I will listen to so many. My genre, my taste in music is just all over the place, but it's fantastic. Oh, same. I'm so excited to see my Spotify wrapped at the end of this year. I've been introduced to a lot of new music lately, That's good. and it it's really good stuff, and I'm excited to see, like, the whole. Yeah. Also, didn't again. didn't Spotify do that thing of a playlist in a bottle? I think you I were the did one that. that yeah, no, talk to me about that. I already don't remember what I put in, and I can already tell that the songs that I put into that are going to be so. I didn't get that. Really? I'm so upset. Oh. My friend got it, and I was she was like talking to me about it. I'm like, you didn't. Oh, didn't, and I'm like, That's I'm sad. like trying to just yeah, it's like it just popped up on my Spotify. I'm like, I didn't get that. That's stupid. That's yeah. Sad. But that's sad. It's going to be so interesting because like the stuff you put into that, like it's songs that you're relating to in in the moment at the beginning of the year and the end of the year is just going to yeah. be so, I already can tell, so wildly different from how like the beginning is. It always is. Yeah, they give it to you. I mean, yeah, that's how it the years is. work, I guess. But <laughs> they give it to you like the start of January come 2024, which I already know that like my my tastes like at the end of 2022 have already changed going into mm-hmm. 2023. So like it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. Where we go. Speaking of change, um, there is a uh, thing that we have coming up in student government, elections. Elections are coming up for student government. So um, for those of you that are interested in running for a senator position, those statements of intent are due February 17th. So that's coming around the bend. That's a couple of weeks from now. So we have positions for senators within our colleges and within uh, living spaces uh, such as off campus or IRHA. Uh, SUV. Um, so um, all of these uh, things are all things that you can run for as senators, but there are other positions as well. We have committees, so you can join on as an at-large for a particular committee, or if you want to pres- uh, you know, support our uh, president and vice president in, uh, in, in on their cabinet uh, leading a particular committee, you can always uh, sign on for that. Um, and just so everyone is aware, voting is March 6th and 7th. So Mark your calendars for that. Every ISU student is strongly encouraged to vote uh, this campaign season. Make sure you vote for your favorite president and vice president, uh, your representatives uh, for Senate, and make sure that your voice is heard here on campus. So yeah, just mm-hmm. quick quick plug there for elections in case you didn't know about it. So uh, I'm gonna transition to sub because their elections already happened earlier this year. So they run on oh, their yeah. elections are kind of weird. They they run on a yearly basis. So like okay. So their elections are for like spring term and then fall term and then uh, so their new president um, kind of fantastic, um, Vice President Hannah, do a great job. They just had an after dark this weekend with Chris yeah. Olson. Oh my God, that dude is so lovely. Mm-hmm. I, I love that man. I heard great things about after dark. I couldn't go, but that's so. It's so sad. We had Brian Imbus at nine o'clock and um, Chris Olson at eleven. He's such a great guy. I I, I love that man. But <laughs> Sub also does a bunch of other things. Yeah, they sure do. Um, uh, in the next couple of weeks, they've got uh, Grandma Mojo's Comedy Club coming up. I believe that's on the Wednesday following the release of. This episode, so that's yep. a student group of people, I believe, majoring in comedy, mm-hmm. um, and they put a show on bi-weekly on Wednesdays at 8 p.m., $1, so that's a really good thing to go to. It's really fun. Um, and then I believe uh, on the Thursday that this goes out, there is Sub Comedy Night, which uh, features Daphne Springs, um, so that's another thing that you can go to uh, this week. And then they also are doing Cyclone Cinema, which runs from Thursday through Sunday, and the movie being featured um, is Wakanda Forever, uh, the Black Panther movie, the second one. So um, that's something that you can go to Thursday through Sunday in Carver in the basement uh, that they put on as well. Get snacks, get drinks, and just have a good time watching a new movie. Continuing on with change, are you looking for your next <laughs> big career here oh, at Iowa State University or abroad? Then look no further than your career fairs. Sorry, that was really bad. <laughs> Um, But career fairs are coming up. They are around the corner for those that are interested in doing those. Uh, The engineering career fair is already on February 7th. That's like really coming up. Uh, The business industry and technology one is February 8th. The design career fair is uh, February 15th. People to people is February 17th. And then for some reason really out there, the teacher career fair is all the way out on March 6th. Um, I kind of wish my career fair was out on March 6th, but for those of you going to the business, industry, and technology one, I will see you there. That's next week. Yeah, I know that's That's crazy. Talk about a time jump. I was not prepared for that. 
Um, speaking of fairs, though, they have the housing fair on February 23rd. So a bunch of apartments in different uh, places from around names that you'd like to live. I think that also uh, some representatives from ISU re residents uh, will also be there. But you can come in, find a place to live next year. People are still they're still looking for people to fill their apartments and stuff like that. I'll probably be in attendance because I'm still looking for an apartment next year. But I, um, it's a great place. Plus, you can get some free things, free mugs. So, it's there you go. I, yeah, free the mug. last time I was there, I got a free mug, and I was pretty happy about that. So yeah, uh, there you go. But yeah, yeah. February February twenty third. I believe, I believe the housing fairs in the Memorial Union. Um, the career fairs, I believe, most of them are at Sheeman. Yeah, so most of them will be at Sheeman. There are a few of them that. Uh, will be thrown over into Hilton as mm. well. I'm going to make a correction. Yeah, no, wait, no, the People to People Career Fair is on the 16th. Yeah, my bad. My apologies. <laughs> I don't know if we said the 17th or the 16th, but it's on the 16th for sure, for sure. Okay. In case you didn't get that, People to People is on February 16th, not the 17th. In case I said the 17th, it's on the 16th. Okay. Uh, with all of that, do you guys have anything else that we want to let the people know about before we throw it off? I think we about covered it, so... I'm going gonna, gonna to throw something in there. Oh, I'm going to throw something, something into the room. All right, all right, all right. So, here we go. Uh, we just... Unfortunately, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to bring Maddie into the limelight a little bit. Oh, boy. Maddie is now NASA... Something with NASA oh. and had to step down director of marketing. I did, yes. So, I've got a... Uh, I'm in a I've been selected for a studio that the College of Design puts on. It's interdisciplinary, and we go down to... Kennedy Space Center for a little while and do a lot of research and the studio meets several hours a week more than a normal design studio does. So I have had a lot of time taken out of my schedule to be a part of the studio and to make sure that my team there uh, has all of me. Um, and I've been contracted for some other uh, behind the scenes jobs that are also taking up a lot of my time. So I've sadly had to revert my directorship to these two but they do a great job and i have left student government in great hands so does not mean that you're going to see less of her on this podcast she is going to be working just as hard as she was last semester so we're happy to have her still stay with the podcast however Trust i did me, it took a lot of convincing it took a that. lot of convincing <laughs> um so you're welcome but I wanted to plug our socials really quick. So we have an Instagram, as many of you guys know, but you might not know, we have a TikTok. It's fairly new. We had a we had to consult with our lawyers about um, <laughs> some certain things, mm -hmm. but we officially have a TikTok now. I posted the first one last week, and hopefully I can convince Jacob and Jaden to do some more TikToks here in the near future because gotta, I love TikTok. I spend a back. lot of my time on TikTok, and so... Jacob gave you a thumbs up on that. Okay, good. Solid. I... I gotta, I gotta, I want to, I want to reach as many people as possible, right? And right. If I spend a lot of time on TikTok, that means other Iowa State students spend a lot of time on TikTok. Right. We got, we got to feed to our audience. We got to feed exactly, to the masses. Exactly. Exactly. Masses. So, ISU StuGov is our handle on TikTok. It's also our handle on Instagram and YouTube, where you you might be watching this. So, um, make sure to follow us. That way, you can get. Information we'll post when episodes drop if you don't have our schedule or whatnot. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I but think yeah, with all of that, thank you guys so much for listening to this producer uh, this producer bit here. Uh, this has been Ethan, Maddie, and Sundar signing off. I'm going to throw it back to Jacob and Jaden. All right. With us today is the Associate Vice President for Public Safety and Chief of Police, Michael Noon. Hey. That, well, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Awesome to have you on. Uh, I think, you know, we just got finished here with the, uh, the open house here in the S uh, Student Innovation Center. Had a lot of students through this place. Uh, so, you know, these uh, mics are warmed up for us. Right. Uh, so I'm, I'm ready for a great conversation. Yeah, for about the last hour and a half we've had those students. <laughs> you are our grand finale. Oh, evening, I like it. So <laughs> we have saved the best for last. <laughs> but... Um, you carry some pretty big titles for safety within the Iowa State community. So I suppose before coming to Iowa State, what was your previous experience? I know you've kind of held similar positions elsewhere. Yeah, so before Iowa State, I was at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, um, spent almost 19 years of my policing career uh, there. 
Uh, I actually worked up through the ranks of that organization, started off as a normal patrol officer, uh, liaisoned with the district attorney's office for a while, held sergeant, lieutenant, captain. I, my time there ended as captain. I was responsible there for um, the field services division when I left, which was normal police patrol, special events, you know, football, basketball, all that fun stuff uh, that we have, and the 911 center, the hospital complex there. And then this great opportunity opened up uh, actually almost six years ago now that I came to Iowa State. Um, saw the opportunity, had watched Iowa State for quite some time, saw, you know, of course the student enrollment was growing, mm -hmm. the campus was growing. I knew, I'd heard good things about the public safety department here and the police department. And so when that opportunity came up and the recruiting firm reached out, I, I knew it was the time and this was the campus. Dang, that's awesome. So you were watching Iowa State before you even we, like had the possibility to come. Yeah, and I actually had sent um, some of our staff here for training. Uh, the police department was doing some, um, uh, P we call it PTO, police training officer. It's a really different model of training police officers. We were using it at my last agency as well. It's a problem-based learning model. Mm -hmm. And um, we were excited about that. We were using it, and we saw Iowa State was hosting a class, and we sent some people here. So just my two worlds kind of collided then when this position opened up. And um, Iowa State definitely has a lot of um, unique features. And um, I knew this was also the community that, that my family would, would enjoy. And uh, actually, my daughter's a senior. One of my two daughters is a senior here right now and graduates in May. So um, Iowa State's become our home for sure. Dang, well, congratulations to her as well. <laughs> yeah. Is she following the same criminal justice maybe no. pathway? No, she's in finance. Okay, she she okay. took a smarter path probably. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> the, you know, law enforcement um, right now is in an interesting point, and we're not seeing the numbers come in. But I think, you know, if somebody's interested in law enforcement, Iowa State's the place to be. Yeah. So you mentioned that uh, you've been in uh, – uh, campus law enforcement for uh, most of your career, what would you say is kind of the primary difference uh, between like your role as a member of a campus police department versus maybe, uh, you know, a typical like city police yeah. department? Uh, I get to ask that question a lot. And we, you know, we have a great partnership with the Ames Police Department and, and Chief Huff and I work together frequently. Um, you know, it, we have all the same issues, all the mm -hmm. same types of crimes that happen. Um, just one of the, th the aspects I always tell people is um, our student population never ages. Like, right? I mean, you know, we're dealing with that same age population, some of the, the same issues. Um, and every four years, right, we've got this new crop of students. Well, every year we get new students, but, you know, it's that big turnover in that four-year mark. And we have to re-educate, and we have to. Right. Whereas in a city, right, your population stays pretty pretty consistent. You get new people coming and going, but that changes the dynamic, right? How invested are people in your community? And that's where I think you know we have to have a real strong relationship with our students, with our faculty mm -hmm. and staff, because um, we're constantly dynamic and changing, and we want to build those relationships. Where a city police department does have some opportunity to build longer lasting. Yeah. Although some of the students who've graduated here, we, we still talk with and we still keep in touch with. And sometimes they come back and are police officers with, with our organization. So. Yeah. So do you think that places, you know, that kind of unique situation that your department faces here on campus puts you puts more of an emphasis on like communication? I, yeah, I do think we have to be more community oriented. We do have to have not, not that the, our city isn't a community oriented right. uh, place. But we just we have to build that differently, right? So every year we have to build connections with groups of students who come from places that see policing very different, right? So they're coming from areas not even just in the United States, but other countries where law enforcement seem very different. And so we have to find ways to, to build that relationship and show them the police department here is different. We, we want to be different. We want to be a national model for what's the right way to police. I was just going to say a few of those examples that popped into my head was um, I've seen ISU PD down at Starbucks, you know, encouraging <laughs> yeah. students to come. I was looking back on your Twitter and you were uh, you guys were taking pictures out in front of the Christmas tree yep. um, for students. I think that's just a fun opportunity to interact with law enforcement that, you know, isn't seen anywhere. Yeah, else. Yeah. And, you know, like the the uh, holiday Christmas tree. Um, pictures that that came from, of course, a parent of an Iowa State student. I follow the parents page and I saw, man, parents are clamoring for pictures of their students in front of that tree. Like, I think some of them are like, 
texting repeatedly their student and how oh, my mom them. was one of those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. And um, I've never got my daughter to take that picture in front of that tree. But I thought, you know what, as I talked with our, our social media and our outreach and engagement team, we have a great team of, of officers and civilians that do this work. And I said, you know, why, why not? Um, and we did it so fast. Um, we didn't, next year we're going to, we're going to probably get a professional photographer and, and do something a little bit, a little bit more with it. But then all of a sudden the idea, one of the, one of my captains had the idea of, well, what about if we also partner with Toys for Tots? You know, we're in mm -hmm. the same building with the ROTC. They've been trying to push for it. And it's like, what a great idea, right? Uh, we can help, we can help parents, <laughs> we can help students. We can also help a, a great cause and a great organization. And that's what it's about to be part of the community, right? And so that's one of the things I emphasize with my team is um, we need to be part of the community and the community needs to be part of us because mm -hmm. we can't, none of us can do this alone. If, if you all believe that the police department's your only avenue for public safety, we've got a problem, right? It's gonna take all of us if we're gonna have a safe, secure, welcoming, open, inclusive campus. And I think one of those things that does make Iowa State um, PD very unique, and you briefly touched on it, was being like that national leader for the right way to police. Could you talk more about like that framework of what you guys are working for? Yeah, you know, I've since I've been here, I've really looked at public, you know, pursuing excellence in public safety while moving forward building community, and it's that building community piece that's really important to me. And as you build that community, people see you different, right? They see you as a member of of their community. And when I, what I see nationally is a lot of police departments have lost that connection, right? They, they think it's an us versus them. And when we have that us versus them mentality, that's what you're gonna get, right? It's gonna be antagonistic. It's not gonna be a true partnership. And that's where programs like our Engagement and Inclusion Officer Program, right? Officer Green has a great relationship with um, our International Students and Scholars Program and, and working with with folks and then um, trying to build that engagement and that inclusion. And it's not just engagement and inclusion with any one group, right? It's the totality, it's, it's building the whole. And then us doing things, you know, we're, we're, we wear specialty patches, right? To wear, raise awareness about causes. We're, we're out there at LGBTQI plus events. Um, we have a patch um, during the month that we wear so that we, we, we wanna recognize all groups, right? And that, that we're here to support and we wanna be a part uh, of the community. And that, that's different type of policing, right? And there's a lot of departments across the country that do that. Unfortunately, we have these negative events that happen that, that, that shine a different spotlight on us. And so we have to keep doing it. it the work never stops. It, it's gonna right. be, a continuous effort for us to, to continue to build those relationships. We also have, you know, we, we've dedicated people to different types of policing that with our outreach team. We've, we've hired mental health advocates to be on our staff. We've embedded them in the police department because we know that's, that's important if we're gonna have a real, if we're gonna model the way, if we're gonna show people how this can be done. Recent addition, our six um, non-sworn public safety officers they're wearing a different uniform, they don't carry, the only weapon they have is pepper spray um, to protect themselves. But they're doing a service on campus that we heard loud and clear from our community. You have police officers doing things that police should not be doing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Giving a student a ride to the hospital really doesn't need to be an officer in uniform with a gun, all of those pieces. We can look at that differently. Um, and so bringing those, those full-time staff on has really you know, helped. They're, why are we sending a police officer to unlock a door, right, for somebody who's locked out? And that just sends the wrong message. Let's get mm -hmm. police back to the things that we need them to focus on. Um, now, I think we still have to be part of the community. We need to do those other things. But police can focus differently. And then, you know, even restructuring our, we had our community safety officers, which are our student officers. We've restructured that program over the pandemic. They're now, we had an officer who really invested in that program, rebranded it as campus safety ambassadors, because really what, it, what we're trying to, we're trying to promote campus safety. We're trying to have people be ambassadors. Um, they're not officers. They're, they're out there to build relationships, right? So you see them, they, they have, uh, a cardinal and gold patch, a gray shirt, and they're walking through buildings. They're your fellow students. And they're here because they want to make sure that this campus is safe. They lock buildings at night. They check buildings. They, give, they run SafeRide, which I know is super important to students because I see how many use the SafeRide program. Right. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the big things you were just talking about there, 
and I think one of the things that students really appreciate on campus about ISUPD is you recognize the fact that to you know serve a community this diverse and with this many different needs, like you kind of have to be prepared to act in a lot of different ways. And I think you know, nationwide, there's been this trend for a long time where we've kind of put a lot of additional responsibilities on police departments. You know, mental health is one of the big things. It's so like having that separate team, you know, everyone can maybe respond to that, but you have set people who, whose job it is to respond to those things. Um, I think creates a, an additional layer of comfort for students, you know, or comfortability with, you know, calling and asking for that help because you know it's not gonna be a uniformed officer which might create maybe more anxiety, but someone coming by and just talking with you about your options and the resources available to you. Um, and so yeah, I think that kind of like multifaceted approach has been really impactful. Right, yeah, no, <clears throat> we've seen that too, uh, you know, when, when somebody shows up with a, you know, um, a Jeep compass uh, that says Iowa State University and is in plain clothes. It just is a different response. I mean, we've all had that experience, right? As soon as a police officer gets behind us in a car, you know, what oh, happens? Oh, it's a tense up. <laughs> <laughs> we, it, for all of us, even people who are police officers, right? <laughs> and so that's that, uh, that immediate, like, you feel like you're going to be in trouble, and we need mm -hmm. to change that, right? It's, it's about law enforcement being that, that guidepost to help people, right? And that's what the foundation was. And somewhere we lost our, our ways on that. And um, not every department, right? Um, I, I look at the, you know, I know a little bit later we'll talk about the history of this organization. And, and mm -hmm. it's a proud history, and, and it's something that should be celebrated. And, and as we talk about that, you'll see why. Yeah. One more point I want to talk about this framework that's just kind of a fun one is that ISUPD has actually talked about this at an international Scale, am I correct? Yeah, uh, absolutely. We've had um, we've presented at the National Conference on Race, Race and Ethnicity. We've also had um, staff um, present at the International Association of Campus Law Enforcement Administrators um, when it was in in Canada. So a team, the team went to Canada and talked. We've had um, universities from Canada come to Iowa State University to see the programming that we're doing, see the work that we're doing here. UC Berkeley. Uh, came here. We've had um, Indiana University come and a number of others. And, and we've went and looked at some of those campuses as well just to see, you know, because they have aspects that we like and they have aspects that, that, that they like. And so how do we learn, right, from each other? That's about this institution's about hi higher ed. So we should partner and look to each other. And so it's exciting. Um, we've won, won an international award for our community outreach efforts for our, our engagement and inclusion officer program. Uh, and so we want to continue that work and we want to continue to expand on it um, because we people are coming and looking at us, which is an exciting feeling, um, but we still have a long ways to go too. We want to be better. Mm -hmm. and we're going to continue to be better. And I think yep. boiling it back down to what Iowa State is, our land grant university, is that's a perfect example of even our police department doing outreach and extension of what everyone here is yeah. meant to be. Yeah, and that and that's the, yeah, you're right. The foundation of a land grant, right, is we're here to help everyone. We're here to learn. We're here to to support. Um, and and that do, that doesn't just go for the police side. So in my role as an associate vice president, I also have parking and risk management. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes parking's the one that people like to um, talk to me about more. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I remind people that's a self-sufficient operation, so they have to, they, they don't get any university dollars, they don't get any state dollars, so they, they have, they, you know, we have to enforce, we have to make sure people are parking, right? And then our risk management team's working with students all the time on student events, on, on um, insurance needs, you know, what, whatever, alcohol, um, youth events, all of those pieces. And, and they look, uh, they talk at national conferences, right? Both parking and um, risk management. They're, they're also going out and seeing what others are doing and how can we, it's really that whole public safety package, right? Of making sure that this campus is looking at what risks and threats are out there too, not just the day-to-day -day policing pieces. Mm -hmm. And if I could just bounce off that real quick, because I think, you know, that isn't something that a lot of people know that you kind of have those yeah. other roles. Um, what's that like for you day to day? Because obviously, you know, being chief of police, that's already kind of a, a whole job in itself. Right. So what's it like kind of balancing those yeah. different things? <clears throat> you know, the good, great news is I have 
um, three great people that, that lead those areas, Assistant Chief right. Jacobs on the police side, um, Mark Miller, the Director of Parking, and Susie Johnson, the Director of Risk Management. You know, so the, the good news is I have great leadership team in place who, who runs a lot of the day-to-day. -day. I do find myself a lot more, you know, some days I'm really police focused. Uh, other days I have to focus on parking and then uh, at other times like this week we had a, a small fire in a building and the risk management piece right kicks in and I need mm -hmm. to focus my time and energy and attention on that so it really as a leader you have to find that balance and, and uh, but you also put good good and great leaders in place and um, I know I trust them I could be gone tomorrow and I know that they will do a great job and run the organization. Yeah. So I know to be successful, like you were talking about, you've got a support team, you know, everyone that makes up the police department and your other two departments. Um, but I know you guys just rolled out a new kind of like support technology um, called the Iowa State Safe app. I didn't know if you wanted to touch on that. Well, absolutely. Um, we're, we're really excited about Iowa State Safe. It's, it's something we've talked about for a while. Uh, it's something that I know students have, uh, you know, they didn't know what I, they didn't know it as Iowa State Safe, but would talk to me about. Um, it really sucks that you have to go to the Guardian app and you go to the Safe Ride app, mm -hmm. and you, you know, why can't all of these technologies and pieces be in in a one stop shop? And we we agreed, and we had been working with, um, a, we had been looking at a company called App Armor. And uh, just uh, it just happened this last year that App Armor merged with Rave Mobile Safety. And Rave, if you don't know, is our, our provider for ISU alerts. So our emergency alert system, the system that we use to send out timely warnings and, and those pieces. And so when that merger happened, it made it much uh, more um, of a possibility to do this a little bit faster than, than, than we had thought. So we actually, it, it hasn't been that long. It, it's um, what, in the end of summer-ish time, we kind of, we approached them. We were able to get a contract in place pretty rapidly and look at developing an app. And we wanted to incorporate SafeRide into this app because we knew if we had it in a one-stop shop, people were more likely to go there. And, and mm -hmm. what other safety resources could we put there that we know are super important to students? The first one being safe, safe ride. Um, well, they didn't have a safe ride component. And so we wrote a contract with them for them to build that component for us into it. So it's not completely where we want it yet, but it's actually, it's working. Students are using it. Mm -hmm. uh, 56 people got rides last night. So uh, <laughs> it, it's definitely, it's definitely working. Um, we got some tweaks and stuff we want to make along the way, but the app provider only had a virtual walk home and a friend walk home at the time. And so hopefully their other clients will benefit, right, from this. Right. And the cool part about this app is we were able to brand it for Iowa State it's Iowa State specific. Uh, my team can update this any day of the week, can go in. If somebody goes, you know, it'd really be nice if you had an, a button for, you know, this service, um, we'd evaluate that and we could add that. Or football game weekend, right? We want to have a section where you just push to learn everything you want to learn about football here and how, how we're to park, you know, what are game day safety tips, that stuff. We'll be able to add that right into the, to the app. We were able to, um, one of the really cool things is the mobile blue light feature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> you both know because of the student advisory board and some of the discussions we've had, um, the antiquated blue light system that we had on campus, those were all hardwired copper phone lines. Um, right. And so we started, they were starting to die because nobody has copper phone lines for the most part <laughs> anymore. <laughs> And so we were like, what are we going to do with this? You know, the, it's going to cost us millions of dollars to put these blue light phones in. And you start doing the research and you found that we, in decades, we haven't had a use of those, a legitimate use of those blue light phones. Really? Um, or if you did have a, a use of the blue light phone, 500 other people use their cell phones to call 911 <laughs> <laughs> as well. And so... Uh, is it worth spending millions on or should we look at, you know, the technology and what's out there? Mm -hmm. And the truth is, if you're if a, a, you feel like you're being chased, if you feel like somebody's coming after you, um, something terrible just happened. Do you really want to stop, push a button and wait for somebody to talk to you, which is what those blue light poles on campus did? Mm -hmm. So the fact that we could integrate this into Iowa State Safe and when you use that, it actually pops up a dashboard in our dispatch center, and they can see exactly where you were at the time okay. that you did it. So there's some, as long as you have your geo 
geolocation services turned on on your phone, um, they'll be able to, to see. And if you hang, hang up, if you authenticated through your, um, your net ID, they'll know your name and your email address and they can call you and have a conversation with you and say, all right, is everything okay? Um, and, and do that. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just before break, I had the opportunity to see a demo of the app. Yep. Um, and it, I was blown away by just how much was included, um, how many different resources, and I got to see some of that back end stuff you know, in terms yeah. of adding and taking things away. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's so much more than I think the Guardian app ever yeah. was. And uh, it's like you said that one stop shop where students can go there, and you know if they if they need those emergency services, they're there. If they need someone to you know do, if they want the walk home function, it's there. But there's also other stuff like building maintenance things yep. and like that, you know, little things that you might just need sometime along your way here at Iowa State. Uh, and I think having all those things, like you said, just makes it more likely that students are actually going to use this resource. Because yeah. I think one thing you shared with us is that we didn't always have the highest usage rate yeah. for Guardian. Right. Yeah. The, I mean, there were people who used Guardian, um, but uh, we're hoping that this is a little bit more. Like, there's some functions I won't get stats on. Like, if you want to use the friend walk, which mm -hmm. I really encourage people to use, we won't know that you used friend walk. Mm -hmm. um, because it sends a note. I, I played around with it with my daughter the other night, and she's like, why am I getting a text about you want somebody to walk you home? <laughs> you know, um, I'm like, well, I'm trying out the app just to make, I just kind of want to see how it does and what you see on the other end. And, uh, you know, then there's just other things like we, we added the academic resources in. Well, of course, every student needs that, right? But um, if you, you know, if you click into some of these, you can get phone numbers and you just hit the phone number and it'll call right from your cell phone. And so, trying to make it easier um, for our students, right? And even faculty and staff. And um, there's a, you know, we added a link for dining and it, it's amazing how many people use these kinds of things, right? That was tips from students of, here are some of the things that we think you should include in this app. Um, and just campus information in general, right? Um, it's hard to remember all those phone numbers and who to reach out to and who, who to talk with. And you know, th there may be other things, and I would encourage anybody, if you have ideas for us, send them in to us, because um, this might, might not be everything, right? If you, wanna, if you see something that you want to report anonymously, there's a way to do that on this app. So just some great functionality for public safety. I think this is a really good example of Iowa State Police Department being kind of that model again, because I know um, within student government, even talking with the city, we have so many mental health resources. Mm -hmm. How do you keep track of them? How do you even know that they exist? And I mean, like you said, this is a one-stop shop. I could report a tip, go to dining, financial aid, the friend walk. I mean, everything's right there, literally a few clicks away. And so, I mean, even in those conversations, using this type of a setup um, for mental health resources might be something we utilize in the future. Yeah, and there's a, there is a student health resource tab that you go to, and there's uh, all the things. If you need to want to talk to our police mental health advocates, or if you want to request the dogs to, to come <laughs> to an event, that's a popular one. Um, you know, there's a mental health counseling button, and it, if you, you can call now, right? And it calls yeah. right to the, to the resources that you need. We just want to make it as easy as possible for student staff and faculty and visitors. So the cool part about this app too, like you can either authenticate through your normal net ID, but we also set up a guest function because we wanted parents, family, others that come to campus to have an option. So you can go through the guest piece and use all the same functionality. It'll ask you for a little bit more information if you want to do the, you know, you want to, us to virtually walk you home. Right. Uh, with adding this app too, the virtual walk home can, from us can happen anytime now, um, which is bef before it was tied in the old app to the safe ride hours. But mm -hmm. so this will add a little bit more if you, you know, sometimes people don't feel comfortable during the day walking home. Well, this might be a, a resource for you. I know when I was first playing around with this app, I did one of the police officer walk homes. And I mean, it was like probably two 30 in the afternoon <laughs> and it was loading. And I was like, Oh, you know, like I saw the function and I got out and about two minutes later, I had a police officer calling me asking if I was okay. And I mean, it was two 30 in the afternoon. And so, I mean, within two minutes, they were already calling me, making sure that everything was all right. So it's up and working all right. Oh yeah. And, and we'll probably have some others that will like, I wonder what this mobile, mobile blue light does. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I saw the 911, and I was like, I'm not trying that one out. <laughs> It'll call our dispatch, and they'll, they'll, they're used to it. I may have done it a few times. <laughs> uh, se separate from the app, I actually have this problem with my phone. Is In the morning, I uh, 
I have my alarms go off and I like in my sleep will like double click oh. on my phone. And if you do it three times, yeah. it'll trigger a call to 911 on my iPhone. And so like uh, a couple months back, I accidentally called 911 in my sleep. <laughs> and so like I didn't like, I like ended the phone call in my sleep apparently, but then they called me yeah. and woke me up and they're like, we got a call from this number. And I'm like, uh, I don't, <laughs> I'm sorry. I did not mean to do that. Uh, it's happened to all of us. <laughs> So I think something that's not common knowledge that I just want to touch on quick was sure. if I call 911, who does that go to? Well, that depends. Uh, are you doing it from your cell phone or a campus phone? If you're doing it for a, from a cell phone, it'll go to Ames Police Dispatch if you're in the campus community. Um, you know, the cool part about the Iowa State Safe app, the way we have it set up, it'll go to our dispatch center. Um, but yeah, if you just generally dial 911, It'll go to the nearest public safety answering center. If you call from a campus phone, it'll come to us. The great news, though, is we have three 911 centers in, in, in the Ames area. Okay. So we have us, we have the city of Ames, and we have Story County Sheriff's Office. The mm -hmm. cool part about our, our law enforcement community here is we're all three redundant to each other. All three centers can back each other up. Um, if one of the centers went down, the other two centers could pick up. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's done intentionally. It's not done everywhere in the country like that, but we have this great partnership. We share systems. All of our sh systems are shared um, so that we can make sure that we're providing the best public safety to the entire Story County community. Yeah, wow. that's awesome. I, I think we're going to wrap up here in a bit, but I think before we go, right now, uh, you know, the Iowa State Police Department just shared, I think a couple weeks ago, the, uh, that celebrating 105 years. Uh, which is an interesting year count. I know that there's a story behind that. I'd love to have you share. Yeah, there's a story behind that. Um, so I have, a, I have a police officer who um, is very passionate about looking at the history of the organization and of policing here. Um, the the of, Officer Choate. Uh, officer Choate's dad used to work for us a while, a, a number of years ago, and was a police officer here at Iowa State University. And, and Adam always dreamed of coming to Iowa State and, and working where his dad worked. And he worked for several other police departments before eventually settling here mm -hmm. and coming here. And, and Adam and a couple other officers were doing research, and um, they found the first night watchman had started at Iowa State University in 1918. And um, so they come up to my office. They're really excited about our 125th anniversary. And I, so they like have me sold, like they want to design a patch, want to have a new badge, you know, want to celebrate the history. And then I'll tell you in a minute about Newt Hegland, our first night watchman. Um, they were super excited. Um, I'm like, okay, you know, get it all written up. That, that's one of the things I like to do is, okay, this is officer-led initiative. Let's get it written up. You, you guys are going to do a lot of the work here, right, <laughs> um, and, and do the legwork. I'll help you. I'll, I'll support you. But I, I want you to have some ownership in this. <clears throat> and they leave my office, and I'm sitting there going, 1918, 2023. There's no way that's 125 years so I text one of them, like, you told me 125 years. Yeah, 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 it's 125 years. Uh, no, that's 105 years, guys. <laughs> um, but 105 sounds cool, right? So we missed, we missed the 100 year. That, was, that would have been uh, 2018. Right. Uh, I had been here about a year, a little over a year at, at that point. And so um, I'm not sure that we would have been, you know, even if we had known then, you know, being newer, you know, what, what would that look like? Right. But we thought, you know, 105 is a good year to celebrate. It, you know, it's kind of a good point. I don't know what year after that we would celebrate, right, until you got to the 125. Um, so we thought, you know, this would be really neat to tell the story of Newt. And uh, Newt being the first public, he was an immigrant uh, who came to the United States, uh, started at Iowa State actually as a fireman, and not the kind of fireman you're thinking, actually in the coal, in the physical plant, you know, keeping, keeping things going here at Iowa State. And eventually transitioned to the first night watchman and uh, was well known on campus. Uh, I really would say it, he set the foundation for what this organization is today. At community oriented public safety department, probably while they weren't police then, they were the night watchmen. It kind of was common on college campuses at that point in time. Um, truly the first community oriented officer. Uh, written about in yearbooks from students, talked about in yearbooks, um, hmm. was was well known for you know patrolling campus at night. Um, actually, sounded the alarm for a dorm fire that saved everybody in that dormitory. It was an all female dorm at the time that doesn't exist anymore because it burned down. <laughs> 
um, and, and um, really set the fundamental foundation. So we thought, you know, this is important to celebrate. So we have, you know, a new patch. Uh, I don't have my new shirts yet. Like, I keep being told supply chain, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a true issue. <laughs> um, but when I get my new shirts, everybody will be wearing the patch for the year. Um, and then we're get, we're, uh, new badges will be in uh, end of February that really celebrate the history of this organization. And um, it, it, it's exciting to, to be able to, to talk through that. So now we're pulling other history items out. And um, we're, we worked with printing services yesterday. We're going to have a history wall done up. Wow. We were actually able to track down original uniforms. And we're going to have mannequins and, and put them on display somehow um, with uh, our original uniforms. And actually, this patch is designed. This is the original patch design worn by police officers at Iowa State University. It was actually Iowa State College back then. Um, and we actually have some original patches that were actually hand stitched, and um, you know, and, and it was done differently. Now we modernized the Campanile to to meet marketing requirements and guidelines, <laughs> uh, but they let us do some other stuff like the lettering. Let us keep the kind of the traditional original lettering, and and then we put the years on there because we are only going to wear it for the year. It sounds like ISUPD really went back to its roots of Newt's original being a part of that community and being so well known in your guys' mission now of trying to incorporate into the community and be well known. And so that's a, a fun little note. And I think our last thoughts as we wrap up here is what do you want students to know about the mission of yeah. ISUPD? Yeah, I mean, we're here for the students, right? That's why we exist. And I think all too often people do forget that, right? Um, we wouldn't exist. Our department doesn't exist without Iowa State and the students that are here. And so we really want to engage with students. We really want to hear from students. If, if students have concerns or have other services that they think we should be providing or, or want to help us with our mission, then we invite that in. You know, in 2018, I started a student advisory board because I wanted input from students. And I have, I, actually, every advisory board has been different and unique, but I've gotten great feedback and guidance and advice. And, and we've actually made things happen, and that group has helped make things happen um, that, that without that group probably wouldn't have. The Green Dot's on our squad car, our huge partnership with Green Dot. Some of those things were because students helped us advocate and students were part of our organization. That's why I have student employees too. I mean, we, I, it, we have to stay connected with students. We ha- now, I, faculty and staff are important, so don't get me wrong, but um, the, the students are the ones that get most service from us and we need to, to, to embrace that and engage that and we wanna hear from you. And myself, Assistant Chief Jacobs, any of my captains, actually any of my staff will sit down and talk to any student any given day. We have students who come in and just look for advice, and that's okay. Call us up. We have students who who call Kinsey and April, our mental health advocates, just want to stop in and talk about what resources are in the community, and we're happy to do that, and we're here for students. That's awesome. I I pat you all on the back. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. It's been an awesome conversation, and yeah, thanks again. Yes, thank you. Appreciate you. Well, Jacob, that was a wonderful conversation with Chief Newton. No, that was an amazing conversation, and I loved all the different uh, resources that Chief Newton was talking about. And I think uh, just a chance to talk about how unique uh, the Iowa State University Police Department is uh, and how we're kind of leading in all these different fields. Uh, You know, I think one of my favorite parts of the conversation, though, was uh, actually the deep dive into the police department police department's history. Uh, you know, they're celebrating their 105 years, missing the centennial was, uh, you know, that was kind of funny because, you know, it's something that, you know, most departments would look out for. But, uh, but I think, obviously, uh, celebrating that history and the history of being community-centered and oriented and being out there actually engaging with students uh, is really important. And I think it's what makes Iowa State, uh, Iowa State's police department so unique and effective today and has, you know, apparently as Chief Newton shared, so unique and effective in the past and made it such a pillar of the community. I think the 105 years is just another way to make them, you know, stand out from the rest. But Mm -hmm. kind of bouncing off that, one of my favorite parts of the conversation was just how they are being that leaders and how he said the right way to police about, you know, police culture in the United States right now is 
in a state. Um, but they are trying to work against that and really make the Iowa State Police Department part of this community. Um, you know, they've got the Iowa State Safe app, which is, you know, their, their big brainchild right mm -hmm. now of, of that one-stop shop of everything. And it's just another one of those additive ways of how they're trying to be there for the students because that's what they are for. Right. You know, uh, uh, you know being out there, engaging with students, that's what it takes to, I think, work on public safety on this campus. And I think they, they're putting their best foot forward when they try and do that. Um, but yeah, great conversation to uh, start this semester off with. Uh, really happy to have had Chief Noon on. Uh, thank him for the time. And a uh, big shout out to our production team. Uh, hopefully they got some good rest over their hiatus uh, over break. Uh, so, you know, Maddie Willits, our executive producer, Sundar Shivraj, our production manager and Ethan Matthews, our technical director. Uh, they do great work and uh, they make us sound and look a lot better than we probably are sometimes. And of course, they're the ones that make this possible. But to all of our listeners here in Iowa State, across the United States, and even internationally, we thank all of you for listening to us about these conversations. Um, but from here in Ames, Iowa, that's the, the state, state of things. things.